Hello there, everyone. My name's Andrew. And I'm Cassie. And this is the Culips English Podcast. You're listening to Simplified Speech, the Culips series, which features clear, natural, and easy to understand English conversations about interesting topics. Today, joining me to co host this episode is Cassie. Hey, Cassie. Hey, Andrew, and hey, listeners. Hope you're all doing well, and uh, I'm excited to be here today. Yeah, it's great to be back here with you, Cassie. And today, we're going to do just another catch up episode. It's one of our popular episode types, believe it or not. <laughs> And in this kind of episode, Cassie, we just sort of chat about what's new in our lives and what's going on with us lately. And we haven't actually done one of these for a while, so I'm excited to get into our chat. Yeah, actually, Cassie, I checked on our website to find out when was the last catch up episode we did. Can you take a guess about when the last one was? Sometime mid. 2022? It was in March of 2022. So it's been over a year since we've done a catch up episode. Time really flies.、Mm. So yeah, it'll be fun. And like we said, we have a lot to catch up on. But before we get into everything, I want to let all of the listeners out there know that we have a study guide and interactive transcript for this episode. In fact, everyone, we make study guides and transcripts for all of our episodes, and they are designed by our team of expert English teachers to help you build your skills and reach your English learning goals faster than ever. Now, as a c u l i p s member, you'll also get some great bonuses like invitations to our monthly live streams, full access to our members only series, which is called the Fluency Files, and much, much more. Now, to become a c u l i p s member, you just need to visit our website, c u l i p s c o m and you can sign up. At the start of the show, we also like to give a shout out to one of our listeners who has supported us recently by leaving us a review or rating on their favorite podcast app. And our shout out this week is going to go to a listener named Ruri. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Who is listening to us from the USA? And Ruri left us a great review and a five star rating on Apple Podcast. Cassie, would you mind reading the review for us? Sure. So Ruri wrote This podcast is so amazing. I never had a podcast I listen to often, but q l i p s is funny and interesting. Thank you so much for making this fantastic podcast. Wow, an amazing review. Thank you so much for those kind words, Ruri, and for learning English with us. And with that said, Cassie, why don't we get started with our main topic for today, which is just you and I catching up? And Cassie, before we started recording this episode, I asked you quickly to tell me what's new with you. I didn't want you to go into any of the details, but I just asked you briefly what's going on with you. What can we talk about in this episode? You know, usually we do that before we start recording, right? We have a little brainstorming session just before we hit record.、Mm -hmm. And you had some really interesting things that are going on with you lately. So, would you mind kicking things off and telling us about some of those things? Yeah, sure. In my everyday daily life, I haven't done many exciting things, just the daily grind, going to school, that kind of stuff. But I've done exciting things in relation to my hobbies outside of work and all that jazz. Especially in relation to my book reading, which everybody knows I'm a bookworm, love reading, <laughs> and sports. Okay, book reading and sports. Why don't we start with book reading? Because, you know, I also love reading books. I don't read as much as you, but that doesn't mean I enjoy it any less. I think we both love reading. So, what's this all about? What's new in your reading life? Well, listeners might remember that I think two years ago now, I had a reading challenge where I wanted to read 100 books in a year. I didn't quite make it, but I realized that I was reading all these amazing books, but I wasn't recording 
what I read. So recently I had a friend recommend an app to me that's free. You can like record every book that you read, the title. You can leave a review for yourself so you remember like your favorite parts. And it also has statistics which shows you how many books you've read in a year, what type of books they were, how many pages you read, and what genres you read the most. And that app is called Storygraph. Storygraph. Okay, that's really interesting. I have used a similar, I don't know if they have an app. I've used it as a website. I've used a similar website called Goodreads before. Have you tried that one before as well? Goodreads is like the the dominant app that almost everybody knows about. Storygraph is an independent, newish, up-and-coming app that was founded by a group of women. So I thought I would support that app, young, uh, independent, women-led business. Anyway, and it's very similar to Goodreads. You can actually take your old Goodreads data and upload it into the Storygraph app and then have it on both apps as well. Oh, nice. That's awesome. So I usually use Goodreads not so much to record what I've read, but to find recommendations and to read reviews. Like maybe I'll search for a book that I've already read and then I'll find people who also read that book and then I'll go into those people's reading histories and find other books that they've reviewed with five stars. And I think, well, if we both like the same book and then you like this book and it sounds interesting to me, then there's probably a really high chance that I'll enjoy that book as well. So these days I don't really record my reading data on Goodreads, but I do use it for finding new books to read. Can you use Storygraph the same way? Yeah, and you can also like follow other readers and see what they've read recently and if they've read similar books to you, same idea. But one other thing I really love about Storygraph is that they have reading challenges each year. You can set your own reading goal, which is reading a certain number of books like I've set in the past, but they also have dozens of reading challenges on a variety of topics. But I signed up for two. One alum is 10 different genres. And this is the one I love because I myself am very much a fantasy and historical fiction reader, and I usually don't leave those two categories. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're very much in that camp. Yes, but because of this reading challenge, I have opened my horizons. I've seen a whole new world of books that I wouldn't have even touched before. Wow, that's awesome. Did you say 10 genres or 12 genres? 10 genres. 10 genres, okay. Yeah, they're very unique. So like one of them was reading a travel memoir. I never read memoirs. It's just not my cup of tea. But I've read four this year already. So when you do this challenge, does it pick the genres for you? Or do you have freedom to select any genre you'd like? Yeah, it picks the genres for you, but then you can choose any book related to that genre. And then they also have books that everybody uploads for what they read to fill that category. So it gives you ideas for what books you could read in that category. I like that. That's awesome. Because sometimes, you know, maybe you're like, okay, I want to read something that's totally different. I'm going to read... Um, a science fiction book. I usually don't read science fiction, but I want to try it out. But then if you're not familiar with the genre, you don't know where to start often, right? Yeah. And some of like the classic books of a genre are usually like old and maybe not super accessible. <laughs> so having those recommendations could be really helpful, I would imagine. Yeah. And they try to make the genres more diverse and inclusive too. So one of the genres is reading a mystery or thriller written by a person who's not American or something like that. Because a lot of mm. books that you read in English are written by Americans or maybe British people. But um, this one, you have to read it by a book written by someone from, I don't know, South America. Nice. So what are some of the other genres on that challenge? I'm curious. 
Um, what are other genres? There was read a biography of someone you don't know much about. I'm maybe going to download this app. <laughs> it sounds really interesting. I might have to check it out. It's so good. What was another genre? Um, read a nonfiction book about a LGBTQ event in history, which again, not of a genre I would ever pick up, but I saw some really cool ideas and I already put a hold in the library for one book to fill that genre. You know, Cassie, for the last year or two, I've been trying to read exclusively in Korean to boost my Korean language skills. But in 2023, I made a resolution to read a little bit more in English as well. As an English teacher, I feel like I should have one foot solidly in the English literature world, you know? Okay. So I, I decided to split my reading into two. So um, I'm trying to read more these days as well, even if it's like one page a day. I want to try and read a little bit every day. And, you know, if I'm exhausted at the end of the day and I only read one page or two pages before I crash, that's fine. But I would rather spend five minutes reading a page of a book than five minutes scrolling through my Instagram feed mindlessly. So I'm trying to really focus on reading just a little bit every day. And I've decided to do my Korean reading in the morning. So I'm trying to read Korean a little bit before I go to work. And then at night when I'm more tired and I can read in English, I guess more in autopilot, right? You don't need to use as many cognitive resources, I think, to read in your native language. So I've been reading in English at night and it's been great. And I've finished three books so far. Wow. I'm not going to hit the hundred book mark like you, but uh, maybe I can do 12 this year. That would be nice, I think. I mean, I've always loved reading, but ever since downloading this app, it makes me even more excited and more excited to find and discover new and interesting books. So the app that I've been using to do what you're doing to record your reading history, I've been using an app called Notion. Have you ever heard of Notion, Cassie? Yeah, you've mentioned it before, but I still haven't used it myself. Yeah, well, I actually got into it because of my wife, and it's not necessarily a book-related app at all, but you can use it for that. It's a way to like organize all of your thoughts and your documents. It's like a productivity app where you can just organize things. And my wife got into it first, and we were actually at an expo. I think it was the Seoul Book Fair. Funnily enough, we went to a, a book expo and Notion had a booth at the expo and my wife kind of fangirled out. She's like, oh my God, there's a Notion booth. Like she's a big fan of the app. So we checked it out. And from that moment, then I got curious and I checked it out and I've been using it a lot recently just for doing, you know, when we plan Culips episodes and doing other writing that I do, I have been using it a lot. Mm. But one of the ways that I've been using it is to track the books that I read, okay. but more importantly, track the upcoming books that I want to read. Mm. Because in the past, I've had this issue where I finish reading a book and then I don't know what to read next. Yep. And I kind of wait for a long time before finding another book. And I think that's why I don't read so much is because there's like big periods where I'm trying to find the perfect book to read next. You're inspirationless. Exactly. So I've been using Notion just to make notes of different books that I want to read so that when it does come time to read a new book, then I've got one prepped and ready to go. So it's funny that we've both been like using new apps to track our reading and to help us stay organized in this regard. Yeah, the Storygraph app also has a, a to be read bookshelf. So you can scroll through the books and just put them on there. Lovely. Yeah, super cool. Cassie, why don't we transition now to talking about sports? You said you had a sports-related new thing going on in your life as well. What's up with that? So this is actually a really cool discovery, and I did not discover it myself. It was someone in my friend group who discovered it. Anyway, as you know, I live in Bangkok, which is a super huge city in Thailand, and I live smack dab in the middle of the city. So concrete jungle, yeah? Mm -hmm. 
Recently, a friend of mine was invited to play beach volleyball in the city. <laughs> and I was like, beach volleyball in the city? How does that work? Yeah, no doubt. Like, what are they going to do? Truck in a bunch of sand or something? <laughs> yeah, and that's what they did. So on, oh, really? yeah, on the 11th floor of one of these skyscrapers in Bangkok, they have beach volleyball courts set up. Wow, that's pretty unexpected. <laughs> yeah, so you can book for like a two-hour time slot and it costs a certain amount of money and then you invite your group of friends. So you need to have enough friends to play. <laughs> but you can play beach volleyball with only four people or maybe even two people. I'm trying to think. I, I don't know too much about the sport, but when I see it on the Olympics, okay. I think I remember it usually being two versus two. Yeah, that's for like the really good people. I would never be able okay. to play two versus two. <laughs> um, but yeah, as long as you have at least, I think, six total, three and three or four on four on each side, you're good. So did you play? Yeah. So I just, I think I've gone for three times so far. We just, we go once a week. And so, yeah, you ride your motorbike to this building and on the first floor is a grocery store of all things. And then take the elevator up to the 11th floor and they've got a huge area with four sand volleyball courts and four pickleball courts. Cool. Pickleball is what exactly for listeners who don't know like it's, me? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of like a mixture between tennis and ping pong, table tennis, because oh, okay. it's a tennis court. Kind of like it's big, but you're playing mm -hmm. with a plastic, big plastic ball, like a big ping pong ball. And the paddles mm -hmm. are like wooden ping pong ball paddles. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Pickleball. It's interesting. Okay. Yeah. I've never played. Does the ball have holes in it? No, but it is extremely okay. light. It's literally just a thin layer of plastic with air in the middle. Now, I'm curious. I also haven't played beach volleyball before. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe I have like when I was a kid, but not seriously. So I'm wondering as an adult and playing, I don't know, you're not playing competitively, I would imagine, but you're doing it seriously, right? Like you're playing the game. Yeah. What is it like playing on sand? Is it really much more intensive to be in the sand versus on a firm court? It's so much fun because you can do a lot more things on sand that you wouldn't be able to do on a court, like dive and mm. I don't know, fall backwards, but still get the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you don't have to worry about scraping your knee against the wooden floor of a gym court, for example. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like you almost get more of a workout, too, because the sand is such an uneven surface. So you're mm. using more muscles than you would in a normal game. Yeah, it's probably great for your core, I would imagine, and your balance. Yeah, it's super duper fun. And I'm not an amazing volleyball player, but I still manage to have a good time. <laughs> That's awesome. Are you just totally exhausted after you play? Yeah. So I actually mentioned before recording that I went to bed at 6 p.m. last night. Yeah. <laughs> and it was the day after volleyball. So there you go. <laughs> that tells us all we need to know. Yeah. And the group of people I play with make it just so fun, too. They're fellow co-workers at my school, but we're all around a similar age. And a lot of them are just super sporty. They also play frisbee with me or go rock climbing sometimes. So we do a lot of sports activities together and meeting together for beach volleyball is just another level. Super fun. That's awesome. Cassie, I should talk about myself a little bit. Yes, totally. <laughs> before we wrap <laughs> things up. <laughs> Not that I haven't already, but you shared some things. I'll share one thing. Yeah. And yeah, we were chatting before we hit record that really there's not a lot going on in my life right now because I am right in the middle of the home renovation project that my wife and I are working on. And that's just consuming all of our time. So we're not really doing anything too interesting these days. But one thing that I have coming up this upcoming weekend, uh, and actually it also has to do with sports, is that I have a couple of my buddies from 
Gwangju, where we used to live, coming up to Seoul to run in a marathon. One of them is running the full marathon, and another one is doing the 10K run. And they both asked me to join them. You know, one of them said, hey, join me in the full marathon. And the other one said, if you're not up for the full marathon, join me in the 10K. And I haven't been running as much these days just because I don't have the time right now. Mm -hmm. So I bowed out and I was like, not this time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> But they're coming up to run in Seoul. And really, I feel like I'm missing out. I'm jealous. I want to be there. Running with them, but it's too late at this point to register, and I'm not really in shape to do it either. It wouldn't be fair to them. I would slow them down if we were trying to run together, I think. Yeah. But I'm going to meet up with them and possibly even cheer them on. I'm kind of debating like, should I go and stand on the side of the road and wait for them to run by? Is that worth my time investment? Like, if I put myself in their shoes, I would love it to see one of my friends cheering me on yeah. at the side of the road. But also, do I want to wake up at like 8 a.m. on Sunday morning and the weather's a little bit cold here these days and gross? Do I want to go stand out in the cold on Sunday morning by myself to wait for one of my friends to run by? You should for do about it. Or, 10 seconds. Or bring <laughs> Pinky with you. <laughs> I know that's not like. A nice thing for a friend to say, but we'll see. We'll see. If I'm feeling good and I'm up in the morning on Sunday, then I think I'm going to do it. But definitely we're planning to meet up on Saturday mm -hmm. and they want to go and check out the expo. There's a marathon expo. And I'm hoping just being in that environment again will pump me up and hopefully maybe by the fall, I'll be in shape again to run another marathon of my own. Yeah, or at least a 10K, at least a 10K. Yeah, that sounds really cool. And you'll totally be there for the next one. Absolutely. I hope at least. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cassie, we should probably wrap things up. We've been talking for a while, but it was very nice to catch up with you. Thank you so much for sharing those fun stories with us. And I also want to say thank you to all of our listeners. So guys, thank you for tuning in and studying English with us today. We hope you found this episode useful for improving your English skills. Now, this episode was made free for everyone to listen to because of our awesome member community. And without our members, we wouldn't have Culips. Culips wouldn't exist. As a thank you to all of our members, Cassie and I are going to keep our conversation going for a little while longer in the ad-free version of this episode. And if you're a Culips member and you want to listen to that, you can just easily access the ad-free version just by logging into your account and navigating to the dashboard. If you're not already a member, consider joining to gain access to our helpful study guides and transcripts on bonuses and to support the work we do at Hewlett. You can also support us by following us on Instagram or YouTube, telling your friends who are learning English to check Culips out, or by leaving us a five-star rating and a positive review on your favorite podcast app. So that's it for us for now, everyone, but we'll be back soon with another brand new episode and we'll talk to you then. Goodbye. Bye.